Hi everybody, David Knorr, and I'm uh, over the moon to announce uh, the Knorr Forum Member of the Month for July 2020. I want to introduce you to one of the cooler people I know, right? Sarah Qualters, congratulations. Hi, thank you, David. So Sarah, for those who may not know anything about you, your bio, your background, talk for a couple of minutes about where you've been, what you've done, and how you've gotten here. Yeah, so I'm the director of marketing at The Wine Group, and you may not have heard of our company, but you've certainly heard of some of our brands. Um, some of our biggest brands are Franzia and Cupcake. Um, we also own properties in Sonoma, like uh, Benziger and Imagery. But I have been with The Wine Group for the last five years. My current job is I'm responsible for our corporate brands, business from a marketing standpoint and emerging channels, which is really a fancy way of saying I wear two hats. One is private label for wine. And then the second one is what we call emerging channels. That's convenience dollar store opportunities for us. Um, I've been in the company in this role for almost a year. And before that, I was the manager for the cupcake wine brand. Um, you're probably familiar with cupcake. If you're not, it's a uh, popular price wine, $10 um, about, and we have a whole everything under the sun that you could, you could want. Um, so Cupcake is the wine brand I worked on for two years. Before that, I came to the wine group doing innovation. And so that job, I was responsible for watching, launching new to the world wine brands. Uh, before the wine group, I worked at Clorox in brand management. So I'm a brand manager, uh, definitely by trade, and I've hopped around in different categories from cleaning now to wine. Very cool. And uh, what was fascinated, your uh, private label, right, your corporate brands are the, the, the wine in some of our favorite stores. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The wine group supplies basically every retailer, large and small with private labels. I have over 50 brands that I manage now. Um, and some of them you would know is a private label because it's under the Kirkland signature line, for example, at Costco. But most of the portfolio, you actually wouldn't know it was private label unless you tried to buy it at a different retailer. Got it. Very cool. So uh, you, you're one of those few businesses where thankfully you guys are benefiting from what I call COVID tailwind. That's got to bring, so what, what are you seeing biggest challenges, biggest opportunities out there? Yeah, so the wine industry is great because it's an elastic good, not to use too much business acumen, but basically what it means is people buy wine in good times and bad times. And given COVID, people are buying a ton of wine. The alcohol category as a whole is booming. Um, wine in particular is really growing. And so it's been a great opportunity for us, but obviously some challenges. So I'll start with some of the challenges. The challenge is the number of opportunities out there is more than I feel like we can grasp. And so if my boss, Kevin, is watching, wink, wink, I'm always looking for more resources because we have so many opportunities to go after. Um, people are, a lot of retailers are looking to bolster their private label business. Pre-COVID, private label was already booming, but because of COVID, a lot of consumers are more open to private label. So private label offers the same quality, but at a lower price. And so when budgets are a little bit more strapped, consumers are looking for that alternative that might save them a couple of bucks. So COVID has really accelerated the private label. So I sort of answered it in two different ways. Um, the challenge is, there are so many opportunities that we can't even go after all of them at once. And it's really about prioritizing. Brilliant. And it might not be, you know, for you or for me or, but I also like the alternative kind of channels to have wine available in other places than we traditionally get them from. Yeah, I would say that is one of the things that we are looking at the digital space that you are alluding to is the rise in grocery delivery and also in alcohol delivery. So there's companies like Drizzly where you can order alcohol um, and get it delivered to you. And so that is something that we have been challenged with as a company, um, just moving into the digital space more. And I think that uh, wine in general sort of has been lagging in the move to digital. And this has really put the pedal to the metal that we've got to get there because that's where consumers are are going and a lot of consumers don't want to go into the grocery store. So the way that they purchase is changing drastically in this time too. I've always appreciated that you, you're intentional about keeping a finger on the pulse of those consumer preferences and tastes and things they, that, that's evolving, right? So talk about um, obviously NOR Forum, a big 
proponent of the fact that it's a, it's a great learning and growth and meet other like-minded folks. Uh, Sarah, how do you learn? How are you growing? Yeah, I um, love to read. I'm a bit of a book nerd. I actually am in a book club with my friends. I think we're going on our sixth year now. And so we read a variety of things. Some of them are just more for fun. But recently, we've been reading a lot more that relate to the current economy and everything that's been going on. And so there's two books that I recently read um, about race issues. And I feel like I'm, I'm learning a ton personally. And so the book in particular, um, that I've been reading that I've really been enjoying is called How to Be Anti-Racist. And it was a term that I had never heard of before um, everything that's been going on. So that's one example. I also am a bit of a podcast junkie. Anything by, um, any, anything by NPR, really, my favorite is probably Planet Money. And so I, I find it, it's a little bit nerdy, but I like to go on runs and listen to NPR podcasts. And um, a lot of the topics are related to economics and financial issues. And I feel like I learn a lot that way. Um, so yeah, between podcasts, reading, and then I subscribe to some blogs um, as well. And so one of my favorite ones is called The Hustle, which I would definitely recommend. I'm biased because it started out here in, in the Bay Area where I live, but it's a really great one to just stay on top of trends, both in my industry, but also more broadly within technology too. Very cool. Um, so you and I talked about COVID is, you know, dramatically is forced agility on all of us, right? To not just, you know, not just our work and maybe not going to the office, but also the way we live and the way we work and play. And, you know, we're talking about, the, you know, how conservative California is and difficult to find a place to go get a haircut. How are you adapting in this after COVID world, personally or professionally? Yeah, I'll, I'll start um, professionally. So my team used to be on site Monday through Thursday was remote on Fridays. Um, we never did video chat like this. What we're doing right now was not something we ever did because we saw each other Monday through Thursday. It was enough FaceTime. Um, and now it's completely different. And marketers were very social. And so what I've started doing with my team is every week we have a 30 minute social time and I come up with a topic of the week that has nothing to do with work because we really still want to make sure we're connecting with our team members in that authentic way. So um, the recent one I did is I said, um, share your favorite t-shirt and tell us the story. And so I, I sent it, a note to my team in advance so that they were prepared. And so everyone brought up um, their favorite t-shirt. And the things that I learned about my team was amazing. Like one of my team members went to the Olympics, um, you know, just not, not as a, uh, not, as a not, but just as a, a spectator. And I was like, that is so cool. I never would have known that about you if you didn't bring an Olympic t-shirt to, to this video chat. And so we're doing things like that. Um, that I think has been a really great way to get to know some of my team members on a deeper level. So um, that's been one of the things from a per, uh, professional standpoint. From a per personal standpoint, David, you already know this, but I have two young kids at home. I have two girls, a one-year-old and a three-year-old, and it has been um, a bit crazy. And so one of the things I've been trying to do is stay present in the moment. I think COVID has really helped with that because there's this blurring of professional life, personal life, um, I had my toddler come in and interrupt me right before I started this conversation. And so there's this blurring. What I try and do is be as present in what I'm doing at that moment. So while I'm working, I'm 100% with you. Like I'm with my team, I'm on the video, like this is what I'm doing. And then at the end of the day, it's off. And my team knows between five and eight is family time. If there's an emergency, you can always reach me, but otherwise my phone's away, my computer's away. I'm not going to be responding between five and eight because I want to be dedicated and give that same, um, that same courtesy to my family. And because I work in wine, there really aren't emergencies that happen between five and eight. So, um, so yeah, that's what I try and do is just set, setting very clear boundaries personally and professionally. Very cool. Very cool. I think we're all learning about those priorities that you know i was on the road 208 days last year i haven't traveled since february and it gives you a chance to not only just reconnect with the family but we prioritize how nice it is to still be able to do all the work we need to do but don't feel like you have to you know get on the road a ton and uh, again prioritize family as well so very cool last but not least of my questions share one thing you've learned from nor that you feel like you've applied and it's improved your condition somehow. Yeah, 
I, um, so David, you presented to my team about a month ago and gave it an amazing talk about the importance of strategic relationships. And I would say before that conversation, I considered myself like a pretty good networker. I'm very extroverted. And so I always, I have a good network of folks. I keep my LinkedIn updated. Like I thought I, I was pretty good. I learned I'm not like, I'm probably average at best. And so what I think was most interesting about that conversation is that you had shared with us to think about what, not only what do I need out of a relationship, but what can I offer? And I think that oftentimes I was thinking too selfishly, to be honest, about I'm gonna have this connection with so-and-so because in the future they might be able to connect me to somebody that's interesting for my professional growth. And I have things to offer too, but I wasn't thinking that way. And so I think that that conversation flipped my brain a little bit of when I'm making relationships with people, I should offer up things to them first. How could I help them to grow? What connections could I make for you? And so um, just last night, actually, David, I was texting with a friend, found out she moved jobs, and then I said, oh, I know someone else who was there, and I already made a connection for those people proactively. They didn't ask for it, but I said, you know, I already know someone at your new company. Let me put you in touch with them because that could help you. And that was a, a switch for me of me being proactive and saying, I think I have a way that I could help you e without you even asking. That is uh, uh, very cool and a testament to the comment that I often make, which is it's a lot easier to ask for help if you begin by investing. Mm -hmm. and, and we intellectually understand that. We, we, we know kind of our own behaviors and how we prioritize tasks and projects and emails and calls from people we know and we like and we trust. And, but we don't think often about what am I doing to invest in that relationship? So uh, kudos, Sarah, for having not just heard that, but internalized it and much more importantly, applying it. So for our audience, I, I would highly, highly recommend you get a chance to get to know Sarah Qualters. It's Walters with a Q, good way to remember it. She's our uh, North Forum member of the month. Um, I was really proud of, of the quote that uh, her boss, Kevin Brogan, is the EVP and general manager at the Wine Group. And it says, Sarah's intelligent, energizing with an unparalleled work ethic. She's a huge asset to our market success and a definitive star on our team. So Sarah, this is when you go, that's me, thank you. <laughs> so Sarah gets not only a gift card, a, a, a Starbucks gift card, whatever coffee cup becomes popular again, right? Um, but also a 30 minute coaching session with me. We'll post this in our blog and our newsletter on various social channels. And, uh, and Sarah, thank you for uh, all that you do. Thanks for being a member of the North Forum. Great to get to know you better, and, uh, and, and I wish you all the great success. Great. Thank you, David.